Alberto's been here too. Look out, Alberto. I got a bit hairy for a second there. I got pushed up sideways against the log there and it was what the <laughs> wanted to tip me over. G'day YouTube, it's uh, Justin here with All Things Outdoors. Um, today I'm embarking on something pretty new for me. Um, I'm actually uh, embarking on an overnight kayak camping trip. Uh, was inspired by Trip, Trip Smith from the States. Uh, he's a avid kayak camper and uh, watching heavy views videos, I thought that sort of thing's right up my alley. So uh, today I'm gonna have a crack at it. Um, the weather's a little bit dicey today, we're expecting thunderstorms, lightning, but it's supposed to uh, die off by about 7 or 8 o'clock tonight, so uh, might make for some interesting filming, um, should hopefully make a good video. So yeah, we're travelling along the Ovens River today, if you've seen, I put up a video earlier this year, uh, kayak fishing on the Ovens uh, River. Uh, what we did was I paddled from a place called Morelli to through to the Pioneer Bridge. Today I'm actually going to set off from the Pioneer Bridge and uh, try and make it all the way to Wangaratta in two days. So, with any luck, uh, eventually I'll have paddled the entire Ovens River. Um, so I'll have to do another section at some stage later on, hopefully this summer. Uh, paddling right through to the uh, confluence of the Murray River. So. We'll see how we go tonight. Um, this is a pretty new thing for me, so I've had to downsize a lot of the gear and make sure that it all fits into the, the kayak, but uh, we'll have some fun. I haven't even got to the location where I'm putting the, uh, the yak in the water yet, and um, you can see over there, that's the, uh, the sort of weather that's heading for us, so it's going to be pretty interesting, I reckon. Um, we might have to pull over if it gets too heavy and uh, take some shelter for a bit. Uh, if the lightning starts popping around, that could be a bit dodgy, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. So I've just cast off from the Pioneer Bridge, which you can see, I'm, well you can't, I'm actually passing underneath the bridge itself right now. Um, being late in spring, the, uh, the water's actually up quite high, which is good, it means uh, nice still water, may not encounter too many rapids. Um, so it, it'll probably be some nice leisurely padding, paddling. Because I'm doing a, um, an overnight kayak camping trip, what I've actually done is gone for a, a bigger sit-on-top kayak. The one I've gone for is the, the Dace Pro Angler. It's uh, a bit over three metres long, whereas my, my other kayak, the uh, Kayaks to Fish uh, Barracuda, is only about 2.7. I mean, it's got hatches and all that sort of stuff, but it wouldn't have the ability to, to carry the sort of equipment that you need to, to go out overnight. Um, plus, this one's actually got a rudder, which we may use at some stage. I mean, it could hit the bottom, but um, probably made for, for, for deeper sort of waters, maybe not so much in the river. But uh, yeah, it's got a nice uh, big front hatch, big centre console, um, you can mount fish finders and all that sort of stuff on, um, and a big deck area at the back, uh, where I've actually got all of my dry bags 
uh, for clothes, camping gear, whatnot. Um, the other good thing about this kayak is that it's actually a bit skinnier than uh, than the Barracuda, um, which helps it to uh, slip through the water a lot quicker. Um, it's not as stable as the Barracuda because it's wider, but considering this water is relatively still and deep, it shouldn't be a problem. It should be able to motor along nicely. The trip today will be about 13 kilometers. I'm looking to camp at the River Road Reserve, which is in a place called Tarawinji. Um, and then tomorrow, tomorrow we need to do about 20 kilometers if we're gonna get all the way to Wangaratta. Uh, I've left my vehicle here at Pioneer Bridges, so I'm gonna have to get picked up there. The old man's gonna come and pick me up. He's got to bring me back to my vehicle and load up and go home. I'm, I mean, the start point here is only 15 k's from where I live, and Wangrad is only about the same, so... So it's not that far from home. But it's gonna be a good couple of days. We do about 35 kilometers in total. Um, and camping out overnight. The weather today, it's not that good. But, I've heard a lot of people say that bad weather, lightning, thunderstorms, makes things more exciting. So, <laughs> we'll see how we go. We might have to take shelter on the bank and hunker down for a bit if we get some lightning. But, it's gonna be a good trip. It's a bit of light rain starting to fall now. It's kind of pleasant really, um, it's pretty humid so no wonder the water feels good. It's been pretty stormy the last couple of days so this is supposed to be the last day of it then we get a good run of 30 degree temps for, for the week so <laughs> I picked the, picked the best day to come out and do this. What good is an adventure if everything goes right? Got some little ducky friends paving the way for me. They're shooting the rapids. Gary Duckies! quite peaceful down here in the river. Uh, willows that hang over the sides it help keep it nice and quiet. But I mean, you know, we're going through farmland at the moment and you know, through the backs of people's properties and houses and stuff. I've lived in this area most of my life and you know, I would have been within kilometres of this stretch of the river thousands of times, but never seen it. You know, you, you can have this sort of secluded, remote feeling in your backyard. You don't have to travel thousands of kilometres to go and seek remoteness and seek peace and solitude when you can come and do it in your own backyard. I mean, I'm, I'm like 10 minutes from home and I'll be 10 minutes from home virtually the whole trip, but I feel like I'm out the middle of nowhere. Can't hear cars, can't hear people. All I can hear is birds and animals and it's really, really peaceful. So really good reason to get out of here and, and try some of this stuff because it's so nice and peaceful. Oh, and that's the thing too. Like, people talk about stress in their day-to-day -day lives and, and there's this new techniques called mindfulness. You know, what I've read in mindfulness is that it's a uh, practice of, of like being in the moment, experiencing the sights and sounds around you that helps to drown out the, the, the stressful thoughts and, and, and memories, focusing on things that are like at hand and, and, and right in front of you can help you to, to deal with stress and depression. Doing this right here is pretty much exactly that. Not thinking about, oh, I'm gonna pay those bills, when's the next paycheck coming, all that sort of stuff. You're thinking about what's around the next bend. How long is it gonna take me to get to camp? How am I gonna do things right now to keep me going, keep me here in the moment, being mindful? 
That looks like the back end of someone's kayak. He didn't make it, that bloke. Jesus, I hate to be him. I'm actually pretty surprised about the uh, the water temperature. I thought it was going to be pretty chilly, uh, considering there's still a little bit of snow on the mountains, but kind of nice. I mean, it's probably only <laughs> the uh, the top layer that's warm and below is a real ball buster, but... G'day, boys. I don't think you're going to be able to drink from there just quietly, boys. Or girls. Oh, there's your friends. Hello, friends. Yeah, don't come down, boys. Got this uh, PFD from Kikes to Fish as well. It's not the most expensive uh, PFD out there, but um, I mean, for the sort of budget that I was uh, planning on spending getting into the sport, it's just right for me. I love it. Um, it's got plenty of pockets and and these little uh, eyelets and, and attach points where you can hang stuff off. See, I've got my, my Leatherman OHT. Another video on a review of that. Uh, get in and check that out. That's a great little tool. A really good little uh, uh, feature here is I've got this uh, little uh, lip grip for fishing, and it fits right in there perfectly. So, boom. Keeps everything nice and handy. Plus, if you ever get separated from your from your kayak for whatever reason, um, having that sort of stuff on your person um, can really help out. Like a knife. Another thing I've got in here too, which is something that I haven't uh, I've been meaning to try out, is a thing called a life straw. So uh, I'll talk a bit about that later on at camp. And you can also put like tackle and stuff in there as well. Makes it handy. Makes it uh, quick to hand. If you're fishing, I mean, the way you store things on kayaks makes things pretty difficult to get at at times. I mean, especially if you're underway, it's very hard to, <laughs> to crawl up the front of the boat and pull something out. So having all that stuff on your person is really handy. Rain's picked up a bit, so I've had to stop and put my rain jacket on. Um, which is a good thing and a bad thing because, yes, I'm going to keep dry, but the thing about these rain jackets is they don't breathe, so I'm going to sweat. Let's see. Rain's picked up a bit. But it's given me the opportunity to use my little tree lanyard. This is a really cool uh, device that I've sort of rigged up um, for kayak fishing. It means you can tether yourself up to a tree or, or, or a rock or anything that you can clamp that thing onto to hold you steady while you cast so you're not actually having to, having to paddle and fish at the same time. So it's, I've sort of pulled up underneath this willow tree here so it's giving me a little bit of shelter but it's kind of cool. The river's really straight at the moment and you can see across there the sides are really high so there's not a real good spot to pull over to uh, have some lunch. Um, I'll probably have to wait until we get bendy again where I can find a place to pull over and have some lunch. Anyway, making good time. The river's quite quick and it's deep, so I've hardly had to paddle at all. All I have to do is just correct my course and just just float. It's really nice. It's actually kind of peaceful with this rain at the moment. Like, it's not pelting down and there's no thunder and lightning. It's just nice. It, well, it's still raining. Uh, I sat there for a good half an hour and waited for the rain to drop out, but it's abated a little bit, but we'll just have to keep going. It's not that bad. It's still kind of warm, so... So I'm not cold and the jacket's keeping me dry, so just come across this little sandbar here under these uh, willow trees and I reckon that might be a great spot. It's in an eddy current too. We might stop in and have lunch. I'm pretty hungry now. So there's plenty of little sandbars like this along this stretch of the river which is great because it gives you a cool little spot to pull up and have lunch or you could even camp. Plenty of cover in there considering it's, it's, the rain's picked up again. So 
we might pull out the lunch bag and sit down and have something to eat. So those uh, willows that I've pulled up underneath have uh, actually turned out to be a really good shelter. I mean, I've been able to take the jacket off and cool off a little bit. Well, it's a bit uh, sweaty inside the jacket. It's a bit gross. To have a bit of lunch here, uh, the rain's picked up again. It's actually getting kind of heavy. I just checked out the radar and uh, just as well I'm not to the west of here because some thunderstorms have fired up. But we're just getting sort of light rain through here that will probably last for most of the afternoon. So unfortunately we're just going to be into, in it for the rest of the day. We've got uh, light till about 7.30. should give us plenty of time to leave our stuff dry in the kayak and then set up once the rain goes so we don't get uh, wet tents and flies. So I stopped for lunch. Um, what I've decided to do is go for some whole grain wraps because it's better than bread and they don't get squashed and everything like that. I'm actually going to put some beef jerky inside them. So, you know, this stuff keeps pretty good too. Um, you know, it's a good source of protein and that sort of stuff while you're out paddling. It's a good way to bring meat with you as well and not have to refrigerate it. So, we'll have a bit of that. Some fruit cups. And I might have some biscuits and cheese as well. So, it should be a nice uh, high protein, hopefully, lunch. You know, give us the energy to paddle through the afternoon. Also, uh, put my chair out as well so I can sit here nice and comfy. Um, this is the... Adventure Ridge. Adventure Ridge is a brand that Aldi sell. Um, if you don't know what Aldi is, where have you been living all this time? Aldi is like, Aldi is like God. You can go in there for some food items and come out with a violin or a surfboard or a 3D printer or something weird or wonderful like that. And they have heaps of camping gear. I mean, a lot of the camping gear that I've got is actually from there. Never had an issue with any of it, so. If you get a chance, buy some camping gear from Aldi and you won't be disappointed. I mean, really good prices and it's good stuff. I printed out a few maps that I made off uh, Google Earth just to sort of give me a reference, especially for, for distance, which I've, each map I've done, there's like nine of them. I've put the, the distance of that map on that page. So you can see there where I've started from at Pioneer Bridge. We've travelled all the way along here, and we are currently on this little sandbar here, you can see there. So judging by the distance that I've got of this map, we've done about maybe three kilometres already, at a pretty good pace. You can see I've got several more maps the same. I actually used a, um, a little tool from work. We, uh, we actually got an emergency management mapping tool called uh, Emergency Management Common Operating Picture. And it's a mapping tool which is similar to Google Earth but it's got a whole heap of other features in it. One of them is that you can actually draw the shape of something to measure distance. Like uh, with a couple of other functions that I've uh, sorry, programs that I've used, you can only sort of measure in straight lines, which makes it hard to measure uh, the course of a river. But with this uh, emergency management common operating picture, I was able to actually draw the course of the river to work out the distance. And I've done that for each of the maps that I've printed out, so that I can work out exactly how far I've got to paddle. Now I've got these uh, these glasses, uh, they're polarised fishing glasses I got from the Complete Angler, which is a fishing store. They claim that these glasses will actually float. So I've never tried it before, so what I'm actually going to do is going to go and throw them in the river right now and see if they actually float. Well there you go, they do float. <laughs> That's handy. <coughs> I reckon they're actually a really good um, set of polarised sunglasses. Polarised sunglasses are great for fishing because you can actually see into the water. But so you can see fish to target them with lures and catch them. I came up with this idea too as a something different to a dry bag. I mean I do have a dry bag there that's got all my clothes in it. 
but um, this is actually a big water jug that you can buy from Bunnings. It's got a little tap in the bottom of it as well so you can you know, use it as a big water jug or whatever you want to put in it. But it's got this really wide mouth lid on it, perfect for stuffing large bulky items in there. So in there I've got my sleeping bag, my rolled up sleeping pad, my pillow and a few other items and they fit into there perfectly. But these jugs were cheap, I think this was only like 10 or 15 and it holds as much as that holds so I thought it was a good alternative to a dry bag, especially if you've got crushable stuff that you obviously don't want to get squashed or anything like that, you can put in there and it's like a, a little hard case uh, boot for the kayak where you can put all your stuff in there and uh, can protect it. Another cool little device that I've found uh, is this little monopod selfie stick combo. Now it's got the little kick out legs down the bottom but the beauty of it is that you can collapse the legs so it becomes that and then it becomes a selfie stick. Now the only thing is um, it's only really meant for the, the tripod legs to come out when it's collapsed up like that otherwise with uh, with it fully extended it just falls over especially with the uh, the camera that I'm using but I mean this is a really cool little versatile uh, device rather than bringing a separate selfie stick and a tripod it's all in one and it's pretty light too all right well that was lunch the good thing is that the rain stopped and the sun's come out now so I've ditched the rain jacket but I've left handy just behind me so if it does start raining again I can easily throw it back on there yeah, rudder back down I can imagine that it's going to get kind of steamy out here this afternoon there's still storms floating around but uh, a nice big clear bit in the weather opening up and it's coming right over us now so um, Hopefully it should be a nice afternoon of paddling and we may even try and catch a fish. Problem is though, Murray Cod season doesn't open for another two weeks so we're going to have to try and catch something else. There is uh, golden perch and uh, trout and European carp in this river. Um, Trout don't uh, get down this this far in the river system generally. I have caught them down here before, but they're kind of few and far between. The predominant species around here are Murray cod, and you do get lots of uh, trout cod these days, which are obviously, as the name suggests, a Murray cod and trout hybrid. Um, the good thing is that those fish, uh, prior to a few years ago, hadn't been seen in this river since the 1980s and now that's almost all you catch so it's good to see that fish coming back especially when supposedly the rivers are being emptied of fish but we'll just see so all the gear that I've brought with me is to target those other fish I mean if you get a cod ball, it's not, it can't, can't be helped. The only thing is you've just got to return it to the water as soon as you can so that doesn't harm the fish. But uh, We'll catch whatever we can catch. Good thing about having thunderstorms around seems to bring the fish on the bite. I don't know whether it's a drop in air pressure that, that uh, makes them uh, go into a frenzy, but Every time I've gone fishing when there's bad weather like this around, I've managed to catch fish. Um, I mean, the big monsters that I've caught in the past, you catch generally at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but when there's weather, weather around, or sort of unstable atmosphere, it seems to make them go nuts. The duck buddies are back. I don't know whether you can see them. 
shooting the rapids in front of me. There they are. I've never seen ducks do that before. Seems we've come along, come across a log jam. Oh, this could be tricky. Look at this. Oh, the, the banks are really steep too. Hmm. Hang on, we might be able to get through it. For a second there, I got pushed up sideways against the log there, and it was wanting to <laughs> wanting to tip me over. I started getting water coming in, and oh, my butt cracks. <sighs> my butt cracks all wet now. Oh well, wouldn't be an adventure without some adversity. Here I was thinking I was going to be in for a leisurely paddle today. Uh, well, it was for the first couple of hours but then we just had rapid after rapid after rapid um, we had a creek just flow into the river and it's gotten really wide all of a sudden so I'm not sure what creek it was actually it's, it was on the map it looks it looked as wide as the, the river it was flowing into so and I've got to pull over shortly and dry out the cockpit because there's so much water in here <laughs> the uh, the rapids did a number on me. Keep kicking me sideways. I went, uh, I, I'm annoyed I didn't get it on camera, but I went um, for a line which I thought was uh, shallower and easier and actually turned it to be too shallow. And I got rode up on the rocks and then I spun me sideways and just about tipped me out. I mean, if it had happened in deep water, I would have been in real trouble, but <sighs> thankfully it was just on the rocks and I was able to, I was able to get out of the kayak and drag it up to a spot where it was deeper and get back in and then shoot more rapids. So, in a nice calm bit now, I can relax for a bit. Looks like I'm coming up on another log jam here. You can see that all up there. I might pull over to the left here and just go and assess this one before I get into it. We'll better go over and check it out uh, before I shoot these rapids. You can see over there, it's just full of logs all on that side. Whereas if I dra drag the kayak over this little spit here, it'll probably just launch in here. And head on down just to the left of that log there. Down there. I'm the, the world's worst drinker of water. I mean, I've already had... Uh, one today, but it's a real struggle for me. I've got to keep reminding myself to drink water. One thing about um, bringing water with you, I, I bought myself a, a big water bag, but I sort of figured it'd be hard to um, to store somewhere, and you know, it'd have to be up on top of the deck somewhere, and it'd get really warm. So, although, uh, and I think probably a better option was to to bring a whole lot of water bottles along because you can just throw them in anywhere there's a, a little space plus with the water bag if you get a hole in it you lose the whole lot if you've got uh, separate water bottles you know the odds of losing all of them are, are pretty slim so and they're much easier to, to fit in the kayak in all different spaces these are those really super squashy ones that you can squash down to almost nothing and then you can take your rubbish out with you always take your rubbish out with you. Right, let's go. Oh, we're away. Right, let's see how we go. Yeah. We're on the ground. 
it's turned out to be a cracker of an afternoon. Just a little bit of rain earlier on, but uh, it's been nice and sunny and warm all afternoon now. Bit of a bit of a breeze blowing, but apart from that, you can't ask for much more. It's roughly about 3:30, and I'm getting close to the campsite for the night, so I'll have plenty of time to do the camp stuff, hang around the camp, and relax and get everything set up how I like it. And I'll have to worry about things getting so wet. So it should be a nice leisurely night. We'll see if we can get a fire going. Got some things I want to try with the fire. Uh, easy night around camp. Hopefully this uh, campsite is deserted. It's actually a public access campsite so you can get, get at it from the road. But hopefully this weather's scared people off and I've got it all to myself. One thing I've learnt whilst using this kayak, while the rudder's great, the length of the kayak is more of an issue. Especially when you come out of the fast water into the still water. It, uh, the still water like catches you as you come out of the quick water and you can spin you. So you've got to sort of be onto it. You've got to be watching where the, the, the swift water is going and where the, the, those little eddy currents are because you can end up spun around backwards and going backwards, which isn't real good when you're coming through rapids, especially when you've got a rudder on too. That, if you're going backwards and that rudder touches bottom, bye-bye rudder. Snap him off. So, just got to be wary of it. But, I mean, the river's less twisty and turny now. It's nice and straight and it's, and it's quick. I mean, I'm hardly having to paddle at all. It's just... Uh, it's nice and easy. I guess it's the time of year too. Um, you know, we're in late spring now. Summer's two weeks away. There's always going to be a fair volume of water coming down the river, especially with, with there still being snow, a little bit of snow on the mountains. Um, the snow melt contributes to it, and plus we've had a lot of stormy days lately. It's a bit of flow on the river, but it's a really nice, it's really nice to paddle. I mean, I've paddled this river at the end of summer and it's just dragging, dragging, dragging. The fishing's probably better when the water's down too. So, six of one, half dozen of the other really. But fishing's kind of a secondary thing for me on this trip. I just want to get out and paddle. As I said earlier, um, I hope to uh, paddle this whole river at some stage. You can see the bridge up here. So, definitely at the reserve. How's it going? Good, thanks. So I'm happy that I got here in plenty of time. Gives me time to kind of just chill out, not have to rush, getting set up. I don't think I'll set the tent up just yet. I'll uh, wait till it's uh, a bit later. So in two weeks time, the season for Murray Cod opens. Uh, they're probably the number one inland game fish in Australia. And that's the, the trout cod that I was talking about earlier. And, um, they, they are really on the rise in this river system and you probably get two of them to one of them. Here's the Tarawindji River Road Bridge. Ooh. That looks interesting. That might be interesting running that tomorrow. Gee, do you want to stay clear of those big yonnies? Ah. Uh. That might be alright just through there, through those two. Or maybe that outside one there. Looks like Confucius or someone's been here. <laughs> Save the world, grow your own reality. It would be that much more profound if it didn't have uh, two L's in reality. El Bato's been here too. Look out, El Bato. People that watch Simpsons would know that. Ooh. There's my 
kayak all the way down there. So I went and got changed into some clean clothes and now it's time to throw the tent up. So I've got this little one-man tent that I got issued when I was in the Air Force. Alright, there's the tent all set up. That's some cosy looking in there. It's actually a really good summer tent. Uh, plenty of uh, room for air to flow through. It should be nice and cosy. Plus, got a really great view. So I started collecting firewood and all along here you can see big piles of driftwood. You can see the driftwood you get um, decent pieces of wood that'll burn but it also catches all of this fine stuff that you can use for tinder to uh, to get your fire started so and literally where I'm building a fire is like right there so very little work required. I've had this flint for many years that my brother gave me and I always wanted to try it out so I could light a fire with it. I collected some of the fine material from the driftwood to use as tinder. I mustn't have been doing it right because I couldn't for the life of me get the fire started. So unfortunately I had to cheat and use fire lighters. But in the end I got a nice fire going so that's all that matters. So it's time to have a bit of dinner, baby. So I've taken out my my little uh, butane propane stove. I actually got this this little stove from Walmart when I was in the States a couple of years ago, and this is probably the first time I've ever used it. So what I'm going to have tonight is one of these backcountry cuisines. It's a freeze-dried meal, gluten-free beef stroganoff. All that took all the bit. Three or four minutes to boil. Pick that up. Tip it into dirt. Seal him up and let it stand for ten minutes. Well, that's been ten minutes, so that's thickened up nicely. Meat tastes a little funny. Got a little cod. Unfortunately, it's out of season and I reckon he's too short anyway, so better put him back in. Better it's nice to get one. Well, I wasn't really expecting to catch a fish, so um, <laughs> that was a bit of an added bonus. On uh, second thoughts, it was probably a trout cod because it was a bit paler and it had the little stripe behind its eye, which the Murray cods don't have. It's nice to chill. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's it for me tonight. Um, so I'll probably hit the bit, hit the uh, sack in about an hour or so, and I will see you guys in the morning. It's quarter past six and I'm awake, but I've been awake for a lot longer than that. It gets really noisy here in the morning with the birds. Hot. after 8am 
swim and I've just got on the water. So we're looking at paddling about 20 kilometers today. Um, hopefully it's fairly good paddling. We're gonna get, um, get rowdy. First thing as we cross under the bridge, remember we saw yesterday, there's some big rocks underneath there that we're gonna have to watch out for. So we're gonna stick to the right hand side like we did when we scouted it out. So let's see how we go. Super peaceful out here this morning. All you can hear is the cockatoos and the galahs. The sun's on my back, it's nice and warm already. I mean, I've got, there's plenty of water in the cockpit already, but I don't mind because I'm actually getting kind of warm paddling. I'm trying to punch out a few quick Ks so I can take my time a little bit. I've done about two kilometers already in, in the first half an hour, so. So we're making pretty good time already this morning. Uh, the flow's pretty quick actually, so that's helping, helping a bit. There we go again, spinning around in the eddies. At least I didn't go into the trees. All right. I don't claim to be the most experienced kayaker that, that ever was and um, you know at first you see every rapid as a oh no here we go again sort of thing but the more you do it the more you kind of embrace the challenge the more you do it the more ex you're exposed to it the more you can start to read the lines so much better you can look at every ripple of, of water or every direction that the water takes and you start to see patterns and you start to you can tell whether there's something submerged that you should watch out for or whether it's the right line to take and after a while you come to embrace the challenge you see another rapid oh cool which line will i take this time it kind of goes back to what i was talking about yesterday about the mindfulness and being in the moment sort of thing you can't help but be in the moment because you're always constantly assessing the situation that lays out in front of you. And you've got no time to think about problems at home or problems at work or money issues or you've got no time to think about that stuff. All the stuff that you've got to think about is laid out right in front of you in the here and now. And you've got to embrace the challenge because you kind of have to, there's no turning back really. I can't paddle back upstream and there's no road access to where I am. So I've got to take on the challenge that's ahead of me. There's something kind of liberating about that, I guess. You've got no choice but to take on the challenge. I know it sounds funny that it's liberating, but it's kind of like life, I guess. What did Morgan Freeman say in uh, The Shawshank Redemption? Get busy living or get busy dying. God, is there a movie that blokes made that isn't good? I can't do his voice though. Get busy living or get busy dying. That's probably my second favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption. Behind Forrest Gump, of course. Oh, Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Like rapids. <laughs> That guy was smarter than we think. Looks like we're gonna have to drag around that. Probably a good time to stop and have a break and stretch it out, have some smoke out.
So I'm going to give the life drawer a go now. See how I'm, I'm not be able to see, but this water's pretty muddy right here. So we're just going to go straight from the water. Tastes alright. Yeah, get you out of trouble. I think I might keep bringing that. Alright, that was smoke ale. Time to get going again. Been here in cars for a good five ten minutes now, and it looks like I've just come up on the Hume Freeway Bridge. Let's see it down there. So now, if you're not an Australian, you might not know that uh, the Hume Freeway is the freeway that connects our two biggest cities, Melbourne and Sydney. It just happens to run right over this river. So that means if I've reached here that I've done 15 kilometers already today and I've probably been on the water for about three hours so I'm averaging five kilometers an hour which is a pretty good pace I mean I know the current's good and that helps first signs of civilization I've seen all morning <laughs> three hours <laughs> And of course, in Australia, we drive on the left, so cars are going that way. Oh, there's a big truck. Let's get under the bridge. Well, that was cool. I've never paddled under a freeway before. I don't know whether you can see that caravan up there, but there's a guy that lives out here in the bush next to the freeway. Hey, you going? I think this spot's called Ovens Billabong. It's a good, good camping, fishing, swimming spot. And there's some people camp here. So I've just made the call to my, my pickup, my ride, and they're about 30 or 40 minutes away, and I've got about 50 minutes or an hour. So I get to get the lead out, but it's good weather for paddling, and I'm still pretty fresh. So let's go. That was weird. I just came up to a a, a junction, and the flow was going both ways. <laughs> Usually you think creeks flow into the river, but this one flow, flows out of it. I, I'm pretty sure that that was Yellow Creek. So what I did was actually stopped and checked on Google Maps just to make sure I was going in the right direction. <laughs> Only probably about a kilometre from the finish, so I'm going to haul tail and get there as quick as I can. Well, I've got about three or four hundred metres to go. What an awesome trip. It's been tough in spots, it's been a bit hairy as well. Um, a few moments that were a bit, uh, how's your father? But I've enjoyed it immensely and I can't wait to do it again. And I will be doing it again in two weeks time when we make Millsy. So check that one out when it crops up, but definitely check this one out when it comes up too. Uh, as always, like the video, subscribe to my channel, All Things Outdoors on YouTube. And yeah, check out all my other stuff. I've got uh, plenty of other videos there, especially uh, on kayaking. Um, there's a whole series of videos on uh, the renovation of a Chesney President caravan and also 
the building of a mini pontoon boat. So go and check those ones out on my channel. And as always, get out there and enjoy it, just like I'm doing. Thanks guys, see you later.